God bless you. God bless you truly. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You all, we're grateful to be back in the house of the Lord again for another Bible study lesson as we are going through the book of James. We're traveling through the book of James. Um, we ask y'all that are connected, that's going to connect on the feed, um, share Encouragement Temple, like it, connect, tell somebody that Encouragement Temple uh, is live in Encouragement Temple. It's going forth, uh, give y'all a bit some announcements uh, where we're having worship every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. in person. Um, if you're in the Houston area, we love to see your face in the place as our address is 4714 FM 1960 West Suite 103, Houston, Texas 77069. And also, again, Bible studies Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Wednesday nights Bible study are completely virtual uh, for the time being until otherwise notified. Uh, giving opportunities are listed below. We do have access to PayPal and Zelle that is connected to the feed. So if you'd like to give electronically to Encouragement Temple, please utilize those platforms. Uh, if you're not into the electronic giving, you can mail your contributions to Encouragement Temple at our physical location. Again, that's 4714 FM 1960 West Suite 103. Uh, Houston, Texas, 77069. And if you're if, if you missed it or if I said it too fast, again, it is connected to this feed. So we ask you all to just go to our page, look, go to the web, to our page, and you'll be able to get our mailing address that way. And we want y'all to continue to keep the people of God in prayer. Um, we ask y'all to continue to keep the Lizette Poe family in prayer, uh, keep the family of Haji Thomas, one of my former student basketball players, as he, um, he was killed in gun violence uh, this, over the week. And so we ask you to pray, pray for his family as those individuals who we've just listed there dealing with bereavement. So we ask you all to keep those families in prayer. Um, continue to pray for those uh, who are in need of healing. Continue to keep Sister Stewart in prayer. Uh, and for those of you, if you desire prayer and you're connected, we ask you to leave your prayer request in the comment areas and we will uh, respond to your prayer request. We'll make sure to make mention of you in prayer. And these are all of our announcements. Uh, again, we're going to pray and we're going to move on with the Bible study lesson as we are in the book of James. Let us pray. Well, Lord, our God, as we come before you, Father, we thank you, God. We thank you, Father, because you are kind, you are great, you are merciful, God. You're worthy of praise. And so, Father, we thank you for all that you have done and who you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, God, to be with those names that we lifted up in prayer, God. Those who are dealing with bereavement, God, be with them. Individuals who need healing, God, you heal, God, you send your healing virtue in their direction. And, Father, for those who will connect to this feed later, Father, we ask you, God, that you open doors, you make ways for them, God. And, Father, we bless you because, God, you are able to do anything but fail. And, so, and, Father, we ask you, God, as we go dive through this lesson, God, that you open our minds and our hearts, God, that we'll be receptive to your word, God, that we'll be able to learn you afresh. And, Father, we thank you for those who will come up to the feet even later on. And, Father, we bless and we thank you right now. And we, we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We say amen and praise God. Amen. And so, you all, again, we, we started off a few weeks back in James chapter 1. We talked about how James informed the people that in his introduction, which was huge. He said in the introduction, he's James. Not, but that, not just James, but he's a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, which was important because what he informed us from the beginning of the chapter was that even though he is the brother of Jesus, he understood that his position, natural position, didn't mean anything. It does not supersede who he is spiritually in the kingdom of God. He let us know, he informs us straightforward that even though that is a title, he was also one of the leaders of the church. That his primary uh, uh, title, the most important title that a child of God can have is being a servant. He also informs us that, you know, we will go through hardships and hard times, but he said to count it all joy when you go through trials and tribulations. Don't whine about it. Don't uh, be petty. 
Don't go through it as a weekly. He said, count it all joy because at the end of the day, uh, there's something joyous about going through your trial because it it, it, it it will benefit you in the end, as he says in Romans 8 28. And we know that all things work together for the good for them that love God. And if you're a child of God, and as we know that he wrote, that this epistle was written to, to the church that was spread abroad, right? The 12 tribes were spread abroad. He wrote these to Christians who was throughout the world that we understand that these trials and tribulations breeds uh, excitement. It is great. It is good in us. Uh, but we have to look beyond what it looks like naturally, right? Because in, in the natural, it feels bad. It looks bad. But put on our supernatural eyes and say, God, what are you trying to accomplish in my life? He reminds us also that every good and perfect work, gift comes from God. And we need to understand that and hold that to heart that the good and perfect gift, every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. And so now this week lesson, you all, we're going to look through chapter two of the book of James. And for those of you who are viewing online, let me know where you're viewing this from. This is interactive. So please give us your feedback, your comments. Uh, dive into the lesson with us. Because again, we all want to grow in the word of God and our knowledge of him. And so let us start off with uh, James 2, verse 1. And I'll be reading again from the New King James Version. He says, My brethren, do not hold the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. What I love here, James was informing his people that even we know we have this glorious faith that we have in God. But this, this grace that we have, this faith that we have, he said, um, don't show partiality or don't show discrimination. He's letting you know that this faith that we that we have is 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 for all, right? And then since it's for all, he made that known because you have to understand that some of these epistles, they were always categorized, right? Which means Paul, you hear Paul saying the Jews are the Gentiles, slaves are free, rich or poor. There was always classism. But James is letting you know that when it comes to faith, right? That that faith goes beyond classism. So don't discriminate in regards to having faith in faith. And so he says, verse two through four, he says, for if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings and fine appear apparel, and there should also come one in a in a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one wearing a fine clothes and say to him. You sit here in a good place, and you say to the poor, stand there or sit at my footstool. You have not shown uh, partiality among yourselves and become judges. Say, so have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? All right, so what he is saying in so many instances, right? He said, don't favor those individuals who are rich. He said, they, this individual come looking glamorous, he have a high position, uh, don't show him favoritism over somebody that's that's poor or filthy. Now, we don't even have to look at it like that in, in today's society. You see how people, how the churches, some churches, show partiality for political figures, um, for famous people, athletes. They roll out the red carpet. Oh, we have uh, this famous person in the house. And, and someone will ask you to give your seat to them. And, and James warns us about this, this type of behavior. And it's amazing that he, he wrote this over 2,000 years ago. And the, the behaviors are, exhibiting, are, are existing today. And he informs us as children of God, do not give favor for somebody because they're rich because they're platform or they can do more for you than this other person does. He says, when you do that, then what you're doing is you're showing uh, people that it's okay to discriminate, that discrimination is a thing in the church. You know, we say, come all ye, no matter how you are, you come all. But then when this individual high status come in, you, you, you change up. James sends us a reminder don't do that. He said, and that's why he says, have you not shown discrimination when you do that? And so it almost makes our message um, double-minded, right? We conflicting statements when we, when we do things like that. And so James wants us to know, look, you need to be consistent. So if you're going to say that, or if that's what you stand by, then when 
opportunity comes for you to show it, then show it. And you say, oh, okay, well, look, that's human nature, right? If, okay, let's look, let's look at it like this. Let's just say, right, your church on a Sunday average, let's just say 30 people, it holds 150, right? But if, if, if they hear a famous, well-renowned preachers come into town and preach at your venue, everybody go flock because of that name. We, we shouldn't flock because of that name. We should just flock because of the love of God that we have on the inside of us. He says that their thoughts of e that their evil thoughts are evident, right, by their actions. It shows that, and and we might say, how is it evil? Because at that moment, you're 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 not thinking as a child of God. You're thinking in the flesh. Oh, such and such. And then you know how some of us do it. Can I get a picture with you? We run one of photo one 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 a photo bomb and just take pictures and say I was amongst this this individual. But that shouldn't be. James said, look. I don't care if you're rich. I don't care if you're poor. At the end of the day, a soul is a soul. And that person has a, that rich person has a soul. That poor individual has a soul. And at the end of the day, both of them need the spirit of God to, to, to dwell on the inside of them. And so you give, you preach the gospel to the rich as well as to that poor individual. Amen. Again, verses five through seven. This is what he says. He says, listen, my beloved brethren. Has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Do not the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts? Do they not blaspheme that noble name by which you are called? Hmm. What he says at this instance, right? Is he said it's, 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 it's easy to show partiality to this rich individual, right? But he reminds us in the whole sense that that's not how God moves. That's why he says, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith? Think about this. Think about it, right? When you don't have the financial means as a rich individual, your faith is magnified in God because you're trusting God to meet certain needs that if you had the money that you would need. And so your faith and your confidence is, is completely in God. I said, has God not chosen the poor of the world to be rich in faith? Because you can't, since you can't buy the comforts or you don't live comfortably, or let's just say you are an individual that may have lost a job and the finances are not there. You're, your, your, your complete confidence and, and faith is in God to make to, to, to move the needle, to make the way, to open the door, to, 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 to rain down blessings uh, and things of that nature. Whereas the individual that has all the finances, he don't have to pray to God. His faith is not where it needs to be in God because he can handle everything himself. And at the end of the day, James reminds, right? Reminds them, look, you 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 do all this for the rich people, but these are the individuals who um, who talks about you. These are the individuals who drag your name. These are the individuals who who wants to make sure that you're not in their class, right? And so James in the second chapter, what he tells us here in verse seven. Look, these people don't care about you, but you're putting them on pedal. So you're saying what you mean? Okay. And we see it in today's society. Let somebody that is a famous artist, right? Okay, we're going to look at this. When, when Beyonce came to Houston, it was a Saturday night. Them tickets were, were from my understanding, what, hundreds and thousands of dollars. Thousands of individuals bought these tickets just to see her. But if one of y'all was to get close to her, then she would have a security team to take you out. All you want is a picture to say hi to her because end of the day, she don't know you. You're not in her circle. She doesn't care about you like that. And that's what James is saying. Y'all do all of this for them. 
But if you try to get into their circle and their acquaintances, or you try to come into their space unknowingly, you're going to have some issues out of them. So why do you do it? But yet the individual who means you no harm, who's there for you, who you can love and care for, you neglect them. Mm. But I love, he says, look, he basically said, get your priorities straight. Set yourself, get your mind right. Understand what is the end goal. Is the end goal for you to be famous or to say, I hung out with this famous individual or I'm connected to this person? Or is your, your focus is, is to know Jesus and him crucified and to edify and build up the kingdom of God? Well, if, that's, if that's your goal and focus, then you won't show partiality, right? What you would do is you will you you will you'll be concerned about the souls of everyone that's connect that comes into this place because at the end of the day everybody needs Christ. They all need to make sure that when they when they leave that place or their their life come to their expiration date that they have a relationship with Christ. Amen. So verse eight and nine, y'all. This he says. If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well, but if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressions. Ooh. So right here, James gets real, real point, blunt and to the point. He says that at the end of the day, you ought to love your neighbor as yourself. So neighbor, he's not he's not talking about just the person that lives next door to you or across the street from you. No, he said basically you should love humanity uh, as yourself. Um, you should, the, the rich, the poor, the educated, the uneducated, black, white, Chinese, Spanish, whatever nationality that individual may be. He says... You are to love them as yourself. Now, I believe this in my spirit that human we love ourselves, right? Most of us, we love ourselves well. How you know you love yourself? Because you're going to make sure you're made up. You're going to make sure everything is well with you. And what he is saying is how you treat yourself is the way you should treat others, right? And what he says at the instance, what I love in the scriptures is he said, but if you show partiality, if you, if you discriminate, um, then what he is saying, you commit sin. And so what a discrimination, um, anything that brings division, right? And so some subtle as racism, that's discrimination. He has to be, oh, I don't mess with them people. That's discrimination. That shouldn't be in the conversation of Christians. Again, for those of you who are watching us online, it's interactive. And so he is saying, if that's your train of thought, then you've committed sin. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. But that's truth. Any racism is sin. That's discrimination. Classism is sin. That's discrimination when you say, I'm going to treat this person better because they're rich or this person better because they're educated. No, that should not be named amongst people of God. But most of us, if we're going to be honest, right, you, we have some fleshly think, thinking Christians because when we act like that, then what we're doing is that we're, we're minimizing our light, right? We're minimizing our light. If you're, if you're an individual that won't do outreach because it will cause you to talk to People that doesn't look like you, doesn't smell like you, that's discrimination. And then it goes against what he said in verse 8, right? He says, if you really fulfill the royal uh, law according to scriptures, you shall love your neighbors as yourself. You're not fulfilling that if you're saying, oh, man, I don't want to be about around that person. That person doesn't smell as well. That person clothes is dirty. When you're doing that, you're saying that at the end of the day, you really don't have the spirit of God the way that you thought you, that, that, that you think you should have it. Spirit of God will, will allow you to converse with that person, whether they're clean or, or dirty on drugs. It doesn't matter. Don't show partial. You are to love 
the person. Don't, don't love the sin, love the person. And then pray for them. Let them work out their own soul salvation with fear and trembling. So that's how we fulfill. He said, if you show partiality, you commit sin. By what I love about James, James get blunt straight to the point. And, and are convicted by the law. In other words, the law, the word of God lets you know that you commit sin. Because you're 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 what you're doing is you're you're going against what has been told or has been commanded and instructed of you to do through the holy word of God. Oh wow. And so yeah, don't be we gotta be careful. So stop saying, man, I don't mess with them folks. I don't mess with that that certain that certain nationality. I don't mess with them people, child of God. You gotta you gotta you got to connect or be amongst all people with love. So if I if you're around Caucasians, Chinese, Hispanics, it doesn't matter. If they're child, if they if they're human. And they're neighborly, they're, they're, you have to love them, who they are. But you don't have to condone some of the things or actions that they may do. But you have to love them with the love of God. All right, verse 10 to 13. For, who, for whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. Mm. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not commit murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak, and so do as those will be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumph, triumphs over judgment. Yeah, this this is getting real good because in our in today's society, we 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 like to categorize our sins, right? Do you? We 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 do. And again, y'all, this interactive. So you all comment, give us your your statements. In today's society, James says, if, you, if you're guilty of one, you're guilty of them all. And I love what he says because we're, we're, we're we, we, and I'm just be blunt and honest. We'll say, oh, oh, I, 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 I can, I, I can tolerate a cheat, but I, I can't stand a liar. You know, we categorize our things, right? Where we, we look at a murderer, a rapist, we put them, their sins high, but then somebody that's still, we drop them down low. But then James lets, let them, let, is letting us know, no, that this, that's not the way this, is, this thing works, right? What he is informing us is no sin outweighs the other. And that's how we should live our lives, that no sin outweighs the, the other. Uh, a little, a, 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 a little white lie. No, that's a lie. If you committed a lie, then you sinned. Because at the end of the day, it is sin. It is sin. And he's not saying, um, oh, wow, wow. Your minor sin is, is worthy enough, right, to, to get, a, get a pass. No. Because at the end of the day, we can't, you can't be selective of what you think is what God requires you to, to do. What God may say is bigger than, no, James let you know uh, right up front. No, sir. Sin is sin. And if, if sin is sin, who are we to condemn somebody for committing, a, 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 for living an alternative lifestyle while we in the background fornicate? While we're in the background committing adultery. No, no. You want to ridicule them, but then overlook what you're doing. No, that's not what James is informing us. James tell us from the jump. No, no. Don't say this, but then you're doing this and think yours is, yours is okay and theirs are not. No, both of them are wrong. And so that's what it is. You know, in God, there's no, like we say, we say there's no big eyes and little U's and in God, there's no, Big sin and little sin, sin is sin. Uh, when Pastor Chris is preaching a message saying, there's sin and here's sin and everywhere sin and sin, everything is sin, right? It doesn't matter what it is. If you're gambling and, and, and the other committed adults, both of y'all sin because it's in the same category, category of sin. And so that's why I love what James says. He says at the same time, he said, 
what he's doing in so many words. He's he's get he's helping us get out of the mindset of 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 selecting what we want to consider right and wrong. Right? It's like a parent. A parent tells their children everything. This is wrong, this is wrong. It's an item. You can't go outside this box. And so what James is saying, look, we, I'm not giving you no wiggle room. It's all the same. And so guard yourself. Caution yourself. And so what I love is I'm not going to read verses 11 and 12 because what he does is he's giving these examples as we stated. That's why he said for those, if you, if you don't commit adultery but you murder, at the end of the day you commit sin. But what I love is it says, for judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. He said, all sin is evil because all sins cuts us off from the relationship with God. That's right, Minister Lord. That's, that's it right there. It cuts you off from the relationship with God. Because God is not like man where we, 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 we give certain passes. You know, we give a pass. Somebody, oh, I just said that. No. God like, no. No. No, you lied. You lied on your taxes. You ain't got no kids. Talking about you have four kids. You lie. That's a, you lying and you steal it. But see, that's the type of that's that we don't we don't like to talk about that being sin, right? Uh, but we do. Oh, you gossiping? Well, you you gossiping? You you committed sin because you, you backbiting, right? You discriminate. You you show racism. It's sin. And so, but what he says, mercy. Even though then we we go through trial, he said mercy triumphs over judgment. But what he says is, for judgment is without mercy to the one who shows no mercy, right? And so for us as children of God is when an individual sins and we know of them, we shouldn't judge them or drag them in the mud for their wrong that they've done. Especially you already see they're already remorseful. They're already in a place of hurt and pain. The last thing they want to do is to come into the house of God, knowing that they are wrong, but to be put in, in on blast and to be ridiculed by the people. No, they come to you. Lord, forgive me. I've done this. Us as children of God, we, we as children of God, is we are commissioned to show mercy because mercy, as James said, triumphs over judgment. And so mercy builds up people. Showing love and compassion will strengthen and encourage an individual to make probably make them want to be a better child of God, you know? And so we gotta be careful not to judge and just build, build on the person, build them up. Stop throwing their past transgressions in their faces and let them know that God has forgiven you. And if he's forgiven you, then let's move on. Sin no more. He's giving you a, another chance. Not a second chance. He's giving you another chance. He's giving you another chance to be a, your better you. And so it's our job. It's my job to show mercy and help you be your best you. All right. Mm. Verse 14. He said, what does it profit, my brother, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? Mm. Okay. So, we know, we've all heard that, that you can't. You, 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 you know, you, you, you can't earn this by works, right? And that, that is true. And some people would think James is contradicting, but James is not contradicting. But what James is alluding to us is that, that if, if there's going to be some signs that follow behind your faith, there will be actions behind it. You know, I know it says work or actions, right? So what, what do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? You're not just going to say you have faith, but then you're on the back end and you're worried. No, if you have faith that God would do some things, you are going to exhibit that by your actions, right? And so what he's saying in, in, in so many words is that, hmm, I'm going to say this, is that, all right, that's a good way of saying it. Faith Faith say it saves you by yourself, right? Faith, faith is enough. But behind your faith, you have to put forth some actions. So the individual, the individual, right, that, that believes 
God is going to open a financial door, uh, uh, an employment door, right? I have faith that God will open the door for me to get the job. But that's something I got to do first, right? What you mean? I got to apply for the job. I have faith that God is going to give me the job, but he can't give me nothing if I don't apply for it. I had a faith, but the words got to go behind it. All right, God, I'm going I'm to apply for this job. I know I don't qualify, but I'm going to apply for it. That's my action. Believing that you're going to do it according to your will. That's the action. Because what he said, because we know, we know that we're saved by grace through faith, right? But, but the saving faith that we have, we have the works that accompany it. Y'all heard what I said? We're saved by grace through faith, but saving faith will have works that comes with it, that accompanies it. And so my faith in God is I have faith and believe that God has saved me, delivered me from some things. Whatever that thing that God delivered you from, the, your, your work and your actions is showing it by not going back to that thing that had you bound. That's your faith. That's your action at work. Verse 15 through 17, he says, If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does the profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not work, have works, is dead. Mm. Hey, that's something me and Pastor Chris was talking about the other day, right? She was bringing up the statement. Is that if you know, you know a person needs some socks, right? And let's just say you have the means to get the individual the socks. Let's just say you have, um, let's just say you have a, a, a pair. Let's say you have a package of socks in, in, where you are, and this individual come to you. They're like, my feet is cold. I need socks. I need socks. And you tell the individual, oh man, God bless you. I'm gonna pray for you and things of that nature. Your actions, you have the socks. If that person is in need of socks, you believe God is going to do it. You, you are the, 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 the tool. Give that person the socks. And, and that person, then what you're saying is this is the action. I believe that God, I'm using this as an analogy, that God is going to make a way for your feet to be warm. And so if I have the means, my action and me believing your feet is going to be warm, I'm going to give it to you because what I'm doing is, is showing you my actions here. I believe your faith is going to be your feet is going to be warm. Here's these socks. Get these feet warm. That's action. That's action going to whatever we say. If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace and be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Meaning that you go tell them to go, but you can feed them, you can clothe them, you can nourish them. What profit is it? Then you're telling them that, and, and at the end of the day, they're struggling, but you had a means to help them. You got to believe God placed you there to be a blessing to this person. Because at the end of the day, you sit them off is not answering the thing that they need done. Hmm. But you have the resources to be able to accomplish the things that they need. And so they're not trying to hear you when they know you have the means and access to answer what they're looking for. And so they're not trying to hear you send them away in peace and love as a child of God when they know you have it, you have what it needs. Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. You can send them off, but why send them off where you could give them what they need and pray for them and believe that what you've given them will sustain them. The faith without works. And so real faith. This go this this is this is gonna mess with some of us, but Real faith will be demonstrated by works. You're not saved by the works. You're saved by grace through faith. 
But real faith will have some works behind it. Real faith will require you to believe God for that job and go to that place and apply. Real faith will believe that God is going to heal you. you. You continue to live day by day as if you are healed. That's real faith. And so that's the reality. Is that you 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 can't see faith without works, but, but you can demonstrate the reality of faith by your works. Mm. Let me say that again. You can't see faith without works. But you can demonstrate the reality of faith by works. You going out and living after the diagnosis is showing you that your faith is at work. You're walking in victory when a doctor says it's terminal. Is is you believe in God is going to sustain you according to His will? Hmm. Wow. 18 and 19. He says, but someone would say, you have faith. I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. It's verse 19. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even demons believe and tremble. Mm. Mm. Even the demons believe and tremble. He says, you see, faith is the ability to believe, but it must be acted upon for faith to come alive and work. That's right. That's right. Your actions. I love that. It must be acted upon. You you have to you have to exhibit some type of 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 of, of movement. I'm gonna use movement to show that my faith is real in my actions. I like that news, though. That's good. But what, look, look, but right here she says. Someone would say, have faith. He said, show me your faith without works. I will show you my faith by my works, right? That's why I said what I said earlier, right? Is that real faith will be demonstrated by words. You, somebody can say, oh, I have all the faith in the world. I believe God is going to give me a job, but you're not doing what it takes for God to operate. But then you got this person that has a faith but they're, they're, as Minister Norton says, they're, 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 it's being acted upon. They're doing the actions. But what I love what James says here, he says, you believe that there's one God, you do well. But he says, even the demons believe in trouble. Demons, they believe to, they, 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 they believe in a sense that they acknowledge that God does exist, right? They exhibit, they know God exists, but they can't move in the belief system of God because they have no relationship with him. Mm. So if you have that relationship with him, then it's more than just acknowledging him because demons does when he, Cast them out. They said, Jesus, would you come to torment us before our time? They knew who he they knew who he was. They know who he is. They knew it. They acknowledged it. We know that he's a way maker, a miracle maker. We we acknowledge it. Well, some of y'all, some of us, we sing it. Right? You sing it every day if you listen to gospel music every day. You 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 singing it in your heart every day, but what are your actions saying? Are you singing it in your car? Then you get out your car and you forget everything that you sung about? You believe there's one God. That's bigger than just believing. That's why I love what he says. The demons believe. So, we, so, so in other words, what is going to push you beyond the status of what the demons have, right? I believe in God. I believe in God too. But my actions every day is showing that I'm going to trust in God, that I believe. My actions is showing you this. My actions, my lifestyle, the act, the ability to believe uh, but it, and to be act upon, the ability to just thrive in God. That's something that the demons can't not do. But you as believers can. And so 
That's why James was telling us in so many words. Where's the difference? Where's the difference? You need to push past this point. You get you need to push past just just acknowledging. That's good right there. We have to push past just acknowledging uh we believe in God. I think we talked, I said this Sunday before I preach. Look, it's more than just coming to church. It's more than just saying it. It has become uh, uh, a part of you. And a part of you is how you live on a daily basis. Living is action. It's how you conduct yourself every day. Okay. Verse 20 to 24. It says, but you do, but do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified, justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. Mm. So what he's saying is this. He is telling us right here, I have examples. I ain't just telling the people of God, hey, look, faith without works, we have examples right, of an individual having faith but doing the work. And that's what, amazing. He goes to Abraham. And if you don't know the story of Abraham, Abraham, God tells Abraham to offer up his son Isaac as a sacrifice. And so I, Abraham takes Isaac and he, he believed, right, his works, he believed that God was uh, in the in, in, in Hebrew Bible says that Abraham was ready to offer up sacrifice because he believed by faith that God would raise him up by faith. He he did what God taught. I'm showing God. Look, I believe you. I'm gonna do what you say. I believe because I'm sacrificing. Because if you said God that that I'm gonna be the father of many nations, then then. Me sacrificing Isaac is not final, but I'm going to do this to show you that I believe in you. But I also believe that if this happens, as it says in the Hebrews 11, he believed that God was going to raise Isaac from the dead. That's his works. I will, I'm willing to sacrifice because I know, God, that if this is what it is, and if your word is true, and, and, and I'm going to be the father of many nations, and I'm causing here, I believe in my heart that once I do this, so you go raise him back up. That's what he says. And the Bible says that Abraham believed God. He believed that God would raise his son up and it was counted to him for righteousness. When you believe in God, it is counted unto you righteousness. And at that point, Abraham was called a friend of God because of the faith that he displayed with his actions. Right? You're a friend of God when your when your action when your faith is displayed by actions. Everybody can't hold that title, friend of God. Everybody can't hold that title. Your only way you can hold that title is you have your actions. You have to believe God. You your actions have to line up. And if you are a child of God and your actions you displaying your faith by your actions, you are a friend of God. You know, we sing this out. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Yeah, but there are some things behind that that we must do to be order to be in, in order to qualify for being a, a friend of God. And then he also gives this this last example, right? He says, "No, let me go." There. He says, "Faith was working together with his works, and by works, faith was made perfect." Basically, faith and works. What it does is it it, it cooperated together with Abraham, right? And that's how it is with us. Faith and works, it, it, it cooperates together. It is like a cohesive unit. You cannot have faith without the works. And that's why he states here, that's why he stated that faith without works, and I don't want to go too far, but it is dead because it is connected. It is connectivity. It is bond, bonded together. Ooh, and so if it's bonded together, and if a person says they have faith, then some work's got to be connected to it. Um, 
Verse, verses 25 and 26, y'all remember this. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by her works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. And so what I love here is that he, she goes back. He was like, okay, well, we're saying Abraham. So, uh, 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 so Rahab, you know the story of Rahab is that she received the spies into her home and she knew that the spies uh, were sent from God. And she said that, look, we know that you all gone. I'm paraphrasing, take this over. We feel we've heard of the thing that you've done. Uh, she said, look, spare me and my family. And she put her action. She hid the spies. Her, because she, she believed that God was going to do, was going to take over that. She hid the spies. And the spies basically told her so many of them, we said, right, look, if we see this red scarlet thing that we came down on, we're going to save everybody in your household. Her actions, her, her, she knew that God was going to give uh, Jericho to the people of God. But her actions in helping uh, push this forward, she hid the spies. She sent them down a different way. And her actions show, look, I believe that God is going to do this. And since I believe that God is going to do this, I'm going to make sure that my, 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 my actions line up with my beliefs. And we, we are commissioned. And for us, it is important. It's very, very important that our actions line up with our beliefs. Because at the end of the day, if it doesn't, then you, you, you're the individual that be looked at as a hypocrite, right? And think about this, y'all. Think about this. What I love about James, you know, we always talk about children. Rahab, you don't just say Rahab. We say it was not Rahab the harlot. Right. Because we always want to associate and say that, you know what? Oh, uh, uh, Abraham was he was a Jew. He was a he was a child of God. Well, Rahab wasn't. And Rahab had enough faith to believe that you were like, OK, well, how does that apply? Well, we exhibit faith if you're able to drive. I know some people that may be feeling online, you may not be able to drive. But if you have a vehicle and you're able to drive. Whether you say it or not, you exhibit faith every day when you hop in that vehicle. What do you mean, Pastor? You hop in that vehicle every day, put that key up, and turn it, and you expect it to cut on, right? And if it doesn't cut on, it shocks you because you believe that every time I go to my vehicle, if I stick my key in that ignition and turn it, it's going to turn on. I believe when I put the car in reverse, it's going to go back. When I put it on in drive, it's going to go forward. That's your faith in action. Perfect analogy. So he says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. James conclude chapter two by reminding the people of God that you cannot have one without the other. It's my word to the people of God. You cannot have one without the other. If you have the faith, the faith has to be connected to the work. Like this body, you got to have your, the spirit on the inside, your breath. Without the breath, the body is dead. You can't have a living body without breath. That's just what it is. Like right now, if you stop breathing, your body is dead. And so that's the faith without works is dead. The works is the breath that comes from the faith. Because you go breathe out something. And so you all, that concludes um, James chapter 2. We thank God for this Bible study lesson. Look, I knew something I mentioned. Um, my wife, she comes out of Willow Avenue. And so we ask y'all to keep that body of believers in prayer. Uh, they are mourning the death of their founding pastor, uh, the Reverend Bill Lawson. If you're in the city of Houston or you just... Not even just in the city of Houston, but he was a, a central figure in, 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 in the church. And so he's done mighty things. He's opened plenty of doors. He was one of the first um, pastors to allow women to be preachers. And so he was a trailblazer in so many ways. So we ask y'all to keep uh, Will Avenue in prayer and those who are connected, who, who, who were connected through him. Because he holds a special place to some up in their hearts. I know he holds a special place in Pastor Chris's heart. And so we ask y'all to pray for that body of believers. Uh, again, continue to pray for those who are going through bereavement, as we mentioned earlier. 
Uh, those who need healing, those who are viewing online, if you desire prayer, we ask you to uh, leave your prayer. Give us your, uh, your prayer request as we can keep you and put you on our prayer list. Uh, those who desire to give to Encouragement Temple, uh, we have the electronic ways of giving connected to the feed. We have Cash App. Not Cash App, I'm sorry. We have Zelle and PayPal available. We're still trying to knock out some kinks with the Cash App. And so we ask you all to utilize the Zelle and the PayPal uh, method of giving. It is connected to this feed. Uh, we ask you all to follow us on all our social media platforms. Uh, those of you who know your Facebook now, uh, we have YouTube also and Instagram. Please connect with us, follow us. Uh, that way you can stay updated with what's going on here at Encouragement Temple. And those are all our announcements. We are going to pray over the offering and we're going to dismiss. Uh, let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, Father, for your lesson today. God, we thank you for being kind and giving us the ability, God, to dig into the word of God. Now, Father, as I stand here and pray, Father, we ask you to bless those who are given in this offering today, God. Father, those who have the desire, we ask you to bless them, them who have the desire, those who have the desire, God. We ask you to open up a financial door, God, that they may be a blessing, God, to the people of God, that they may not only be a blessing to your kingdom, God, that they may have a sufficient amount of finances to be able to live. And Father, for those who are giving into this offering, Father, we thank you for those who are giving. Father, we ask you, God, to bless them, God, abundantly. Bless them 30, bless them 60, bless them 100 fold. And Father, let the gifts that are being used, be, being raised be used to the edifying and the building up of your kingdom. And Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus, continue to pray for the body of believers of Willow Avenue, those who are connected with them. Father, we ask you, God, to be with those God, who are dealing with bereavement, God, in this season, uh, those who are needing healing, and, and those who life is taking a toll. Father, be with them, and we thank you right now. In Jesus' name. And Father, we ask you those, God, as we dismiss and we leave from this virtual platform, Father, that whatever, God, anxiety that the people of God may have, whatever season of discouragement that they're going through, Father, that you build them up, God, that you uplift them, that you change the circumstances of your people. And Father, we ask you, God, if they're driving and watching us virtually, God, that you give them traveling grace. And Father, we ask you to give them supernatural rest. And God, we ask you to bring us back to the house of God again on this Sunday at 10 a.m. for worship, God, to uplift you up. We hear a mighty word from God. And Lord, we thank you and we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray and we say amen and praise God. All right, people of God, it was a great lesson. We'll see y'all this Sunday at 10 a.m. at Encouragement Temple, um, 4714 FM 1960 West, Suite 103, Houston, Texas, 77069. Till then, come on and worship with us. Till then, we love y'all. Be encouraged. We out. Peace.